Hi, I'm Brian Roman. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm with uh, I'm the owner and uh, lead technician for a company called Backpack Tactics. Um, we do closed service IT consultancy um, for small and medium sized nonprofits and businesses. And a lot of what we've worked with is migrating people from migrating offices from uh, a more traditional email system to a Google based email system. So we've done a lot of these migrations to the Google platform, done a lot of training um, for how to use Google and Gmail as it's a little bit different from traditional email systems. And that's kind of the point of today is how is Gmail different and what are some of its special features that are maybe often missed. Um, and it's, this is definitely geared to be more of a kind of a basic introductory course. Um, so kind of, kind of geared towards those as well that you know, may have some familiarity with Gmail, but you know, haven't really dived into it very much yet. Okay, so just to give you a quick overview, we're going to talk about the layout and appearance of Gmail. We're going to talk about some tricks with composite, the composition views. Uh, we're going to talk about not reading email, but processing email. Um, and this, this point is actually a little bit more of just how do you approach email in general, like how do you make sure you manage it properly, um, and how Google how Gmail specifically helps you do that. Um, how to use the search function, something called labels, which are similar to but slightly different from folders in Gmail. How to use filters, and a couple of quick notes on keyboard shortcuts, and then some extra bonus tips and tricks. So we'll start with uh, Gmail's layout and appearance. So. Uh, I have a little video to show you and look for these subtopics within the video. We're going to talk about the layout and arrangement of the home page, how to remove what are called the web clips and other ads from your Gmail view to make it cleaner, how to scale the display to your liking, and how to adjust visual themes as well as various inbox arrangements. Scroll back a couple frames. 
First, we want to take care of ads. Normally, in an email, you've got ads across the top, across the bottom, and along the side. We're going to get rid of those by going to the gear, clicking on settings, look across the top, and click on web clips, then uncheck show my web clips. That was easy. The second part is a little bit trickier. You actually have to go to the Chrome Web Store and install an add-on tool called Ad Blocker for Gmail. A link for that should be provided to you by your instructor. And then you simply add it to Chrome. You'll see my computer says that I've already added it because I've already added it. But when you're done, in your email account, you go back to your inbox, open up an email, and look, all of my ads along the side and along the bottom are gone. The next thing that I want to discuss regards display scaling. That refers to how compact your view is of your email list. To adjust that, click on the gear, and you can switch between comfortable, which is the default, to cozy, which makes things a little bit tighter, to compact, which makes things even tighter. Depending on how much you want to see at once and how uh, spacious you want your view to be, you may prefer one over the other. I like the middle one, cozy. Next, and a lot of people's favorite, is the display theme. You get to see the themes by clicking to on the gear and then on the themes. And this just customizes the background picture um, for your default view of your mail. You can choose some basic colors up here or probably more fun with the pictures down here. Uh, I'll choose ocean just as an example. Now you can see it changes my background. And if I go to my inbox, I can see the background um, in the entire, throughout the entire view. And no matter where I am in my account, I can see that nice key picture. I'm going to go ahead and change it back to the default. Finally, there's various inbox arrangements. You'll notice up at the top, Google gives me my primary inbox, my social inbox, and my promotion inbox. Now the primary is your main set of email that, you're, that you use to correspond back and forth with real people. The social inbox has to do with uh, things that relate to social media and various things like that. Promotions has to do with a list that you're on for uh, merchants, merchant lists and things like that. <clears throat> so some people like to have these views broken up into various sections like Google has here. But there are a few different arrangements that you can have for your inbox. To view them, click on the gear and click on configure inbox. Now it shows me the options to have these tabs across the top. And I can check on and off various ones. I can check off promotions, and turn on forums if I like. <clears throat> and you can see that it changes correspondingly. I can go back to that with the configure inbox. I can turn off all of them except for the primary inbox. And if I do that, the tabs at the top disappear completely because there's only one tab. So now I see everything in the list. <coughs> if I go to the gear and then go to settings and then click across here on the inbox link, I get a few more options that I can find too. Here are the categories that I was just turning on and off. 
Here are a few more options in the drop-down list. I can configure my inbox to have the important in emails first, or the unread emails first, or the starred emails listed first. So if they do important first, it's going to have two sections. The first one will have important items, and the second one will have everything else that's not marked as important. I click save changes. Then it's going to show me my email broken into these two different sections. Important up here, and then everything else down here. Importance is marked by this yellow tag. So as you can see, all the yellow tagged items are up at the top, and all the ones below have no yellow tag. The yellow tag is supposed to be an intelligent thing that Google learns from you as you check things on and off as important. So if I mark this email as important by clicking on the tag, that will become yellow. And in a certain amount of time, Google will bump this up to the top section. And when I do things like this, Google starts to learn that emails from this particular person um, or emails that are from this particular person that are only sent to you are important. Conversely, if I go up to the top and I uncheck the importance on one of these, Google will learn from that as well that emails from Catherine are not important. And it will pick up on patterns in your importance marking to try to learn what's important to you and what's not. And you can toggle those on and off. And you can do a similar arrangement by going to the gear, settings, inbox, and change your arrangement here. Maybe you like to have your unread items first. Click save changes. Show me the unread items at the top. They yeah, happen to be a lot because I've got all the YouTube and Google Plus things in here. And then the, the red things are down at the bottom. So it all depends on what your particular workflow is. Um, some people like one arrangement, other people like uh, the other. I'm going to switch it back to the default setting for now. An inbox. Click on default, save changes, and then back to having everything in a single list. Okay. Um, Can I ask a quick question? Yes. Um, I like the fabric and organize them. Is there any way we can label those who have that everything else? Can we rename that so if I get a gazillion emails from this particular group, I can email that as that group? Or identify that label as that group? Yes. Uh, labels are a distinct thing from the inbox sections. Okay. And we will cover labels okay. in like a later section that's like fifth on the list or whatever. And I think that'll cover what you're okay. asking about. Okay. Um, by the way, I should mention again uh, right away, just re reiterate what Carrie said. You're going to have access to the PowerPoint itself as well as all the videos. Which is why I know that I'm covering this material faster than you can furiously record notes. <laughs> that's intentional. It's a video. You can watch as many times as you need to. So this is just, this, our session right now is just to introduce you to this so that you can go back and go, go over again what is, was really interesting for you. So take as many furious notes as you like. Just know that if you miss something, it's not a problem. <clears throat> That's because you don't want to follow you on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch the video. Yeah. All right, that's what I'll say. Um, no. uh, okay, so email composition. I wanted to point out just the four different views about email composition. This is a little bit of a faster topic. There are four different ways to compose an email or just views of how you do it. And I wanted to highlight that because a lot of people find the default one at the top to be, uh, which is listed first here, they find that one to be the most frustrating one, which is kind of unfortunate because <laughs> it's the default. So this video will kind of show how that works. There are several view options for composing an email in Google Mail. 
The default one that comes up when you just click the red Compose button is this email box that pops up in the lower right hand corner. Here you've got your two fields, the subject line and the body. And if you were to click on Compose again to start a new message, you'd get your email stacking up side by side so that you can do multiple ones at a time. This is the default view, but some find it a little bit cluttering because you know you have to try to get to, maybe you want to get to your emails behind here and it feels a little bit jumbled. This is actually my least favorite view for that reason. Another view is to click on this little button right here and it puts you into a full screen mode. This darkens the rest of the window behind it and allows you to focus on just this one message. I like that a little bit better. Even better than that, I find, you can hold down the control key while clicking compose. So control and compose. And it will open the email message up in a separate tab. So notice I still have my inbox open here, but now I've got a separate tab for a composed mail message open here. This allows me to go ahead and type the message here and then flip back to this view if I need to to reference anything in an uncluttered way. There's nothing, there's no email messages in this view. So this allows me to just focus on this message and also be able to flip back to other things. Similarly, if I were to do the same thing but hold down the shift key while clicking compose, that opens up an email message in a separate independent window. In a likewise fashion, this allows me to multitask by Having this message open in an independent window, I can minimize it and bring it back when I want to while being able to go back to this screen and reference other things in my inbox if I need to or in other views. Is it going to a draft mode then if you click it to go back to another screen? Or is that where you Pull it back up again. Well, if it's a if it's an independent window and you minimize it, it's just minimized to your taskbar, okay. and then you just click on that window to open it back up. Just like if you minimize Microsoft Word and then clicked it to maximize it again. So, if you were to write it halfway and then close it, close the window, then you'd find it in your drafts again. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Um, Okay, <clears throat> the next topic is arguably the most important one, <laughs> which is how to process email properly or efficiently. You notice that I crossed out the word reading um, because email shouldn't be something that you read. <laughs> email shouldn't be something that you look over. Email should be something that you process through. So <clears throat> there's kind of this campaign um, <coughs> in the larger email culture about this um, that's called the Inbox Zero movement, which is essentially the idea of looking at your inbox as an actual inbox, as in it's like a to-do list. It's the things that are coming in that you need to process through and deal with, um, and then once you're done, they go out of the inbox. <clears throat> Just like when you pick up your mail from the mailbox, you know, you, you, you get it, you process <coughs> through it, and then you file it away to wherever it needs to go, it's, you know, it's no longer in your incoming mail stack. So the inbox is designed not to be a storage bin, not to be a casual reading list, it's your to-do list, and everything in your inbox should be a to-do item, and if it's not a to-do item, it shouldn't be there, it should be somewhere else. So this is kind of the idea. Um, and we'll show a little bit how Google helps you to use your email in that fashion because some more traditional email systems um, don't help you look at your email quite this way. Uh, Outlook has been criticized for this, for example. Uh, but Inbox Zero, the idea is the inbox is a to-do list. 
And the, the zero comes from the idea that your goal is to have nothing in your inbox. Your zero. inbox should be at zero. Yeah, and zero on the left. Right. 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 And that's that's fine. That's where I mean a lot of people are starting at like you know, I've got eight thousand in my inbox, you know. But but this is this is exactly the issue that there's this guy named Merlin Mann and he's on this big campaign to like kind of rework how we look at our inboxes and he's like, you know, we shouldn't be using our inbox as a storage bin. Like that's not what it's designed to be. And so Google kind of helps that along. But it, in in some ways, the point I'm making here doesn't have to do with Google specifically. It's more just like general how do we think about our email. <coughs> Um, another concept that kind of goes along with this is the idea of touch it once. <laughs> In other words, you should really only, when you're processing email, you really only handle that email one time. You don't look at it, read it halfway, go on to the next email, come back to it, read it the rest of the way, think about what you're going to do with it maybe, go away from it, come back to it the next day. Pretty soon you've read that email 10 times, right? Like that's not, that's not a very efficient way to approach it. The touch it once idea is you look at that email, you decide right away what you're going to do with it. And there are a few different things that you can decide to do. Four possible actions. You can ditch it. Um, you can do it right now. You can delegate it or defer it. And every single email that you get that you have in your inbox that you're processing falls into one of these categories. Either you're not going to do anything with it, in which case you get rid of it. That's either deleting or archiving in Gmail. We're not going to go into depth on what archiving means today exactly because you can't fit everything in in an hour. But um, So either you get rid of it because there's nothing, it's not an action item. So you're always thinking about what is my action on this email? Is it nothing? Is my action nothing? Or my action is just that I read it and now I'm informed and that's all I'm, I need to do is just, it's FYI. If that's the case, you just ditch it. If it's something you actually need to do, like you need to respond to, then you can either, you can do it right now, right at that moment. Um, and actually, I, I kind of split these up. These two kind of go together, do it now and defer it. Um, you may decide to do it right now or do it later, um, that's the efficiency experts on this one say, if it's, if it's an email, if the action that the email requires is like two or three minutes, um, you, should, you should just always do it now. Because it's not, because a two or three minute task is not worth deferring to later. Like it's just not worth like putting it on the to-do list because it's so short. Um, if it is something that's more intentional, like something that requires a bigger response or some other larger action you have to do, in that case, you would want to defer it. Um, don't get too carried away with that, though, because if you end up deferring everything, pretty soon your inbox is at 8,000 again. <laughs> um, and then the other option... Also, when you defer it, does it come off the screen and get stored off the screen elsewhere? If you defer it? Yeah. Um, if you def if it's something you defer, you either and I got to be careful when I say this. You can leave it in the inbox. Okay. Be careful with that though, because it can get out of hand. Otherwise, you can put it on some separate task list that you have of like your things that you're going to do today or tomorrow or sometime this week or whatever, and then you remove it from your inbox. And when you see it on your task list, you can say, "Oh, I need to go back and find that email." It's not in your inbox anymore, because otherwise you have it on like two different to-do lists, which is redundant. So, um, and then delegated is, of course, you know the best one because you give it to someone else. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And there are a couple of Gmail tools that we we won't go into depth on um, regarding how exactly they help, but it's there are two different ways that Google helps you achieve this method, which is conversation threading. Um, and archiving. Archiving is a way of getting something out of the inbox without permanently deleting it. Um, and then conversation threading is something that probably many of you are familiar with if you've used Gmail at all, where it groups emails together if they have the same subject. Um, since though, since any group, any emails that are in a thread tend to have the same action that you want to do to them, that means you know if something's threaded together, you can 
ditch it just once instead of having to delete like all four of the emails that people have entered into that conversation thread. So that's why those conversation threads are supposed to be helpful for this. <coughs> So it's, it's difficult to show that, by the way, in a video. So I don't have a video for that, because it's more like abstract, kind of conceptual. Unfortunately, it happens to be, in my opinion, maybe the most important point you're going to hear today, but <laughs> um, in a way. But, you know, it's, uh, but it takes time. Like what I just described on that last slide, like it takes time to like get used to that concept and then get used to the habits of it. So, OK, um, the power of search that does, I would say, also help with that method, though because things are, uh, it's really fast to find emails. Uh, Google started Gmail on this motto of search, don't sort. <laughs> um, Google said, you know, we spend too much time filing away emails and like sorting them into particular categories. What we should really do is just, you just dump them into the archive once you're done with it, you know, once you ditch it. Um, and then if you ever need it later, which is honestly a minority of your emails, then you can just use the search function to find it. You know, don't spend your time sorting your mail and then looking for it manually again. Um, so and we'll see how powerful that search is in just a second. And then they also have like an advanced searching feature, which we'll show here in this video. <coughs> The best way to find emails that have been archived out of the inbox is to use Gmail's prominently displayed search box. So if I want to find something that I sent to Catherine, I just type in Catherine, and Google will show me any email that has the word Catherine anywhere in it, anywhere in that email at all, whether it's the subject line or the text body or the sender field. And if I want to find something else, I just erase that and type Donna instead, and all the emails that have the word Donna in them pop up. And as you can see, it's pretty much instantaneous, so it's a very fast way to find emails. Using the search box also allows me to narrow my search a little bit more. So if I had a bunch of emails that had the word Donna in it, I might add another word and say, okay, I want emails that have both the word Donna and the word birthday in them, because that's the email that I'm looking for. And boom, this is narrowed down the search, and it's only given me one search result. This is the only email in my account that has both of those words in it. And you'd be amazed uh, how much you can narrow down a search by just adding two words. Uh, it will give you only a, a handful of emails. It's much easier to look through than uh, a large folder of emails which you might be used to from Microsoft Outlook. There's also an advanced search function in the Google search box. You have to click over on the right on the little arrow, and you can specify in more detail whether you want to look um, from emails from Donna with the word birthday in the subject line specifically. Maybe you want to add that you want to look for emails that don't have certain words, or emails that have attachments or don't have attachments, um, or look for emails of a certain size or within a certain date range. So you can refine your search pretty much as much as you like with this tool. OK, so there's the, the basics of search and then also the advanced search, a very powerful tool. When people first moved to Google Mail and like, learn about the search functionality, what I found is um, users will tend to use folders or labels less and less and use the search box more and more because it's so fast. But, Question. Yes. If you're looking for, say, an email from Barbara and it's embedded, if you responded to it, will it still find it? If you responded to it? Yeah, so you had an email from Barbara, then you responded to you, then you. Yeah. And so she's not the one that it most recently it's from. Right. Will it find that? Yeah, it'll find that. And it will it'll still group all those together in a yeah. conversation. Mm -hmm. And your in your search result, you will get an, any email that has the word Barbara anywhere in it. even. No, but if it said from Barbara, if I was searching from Barbara. Oh, 
Yeah, it would only then show you um, conversations that have at least one email that was from Barbara. Oh, it wouldn't have to be the most recent. But it wouldn't have to be the most but, recent, okay. yeah, because when it gives you the search results, it'll always give you the entire conversation. Gotcha. Yep, okay. yes. Okay, so labels. Um, labels are to be used, are designed to be used to categorize email for things that are difficult to search for. <laughs> so labels kind of pick up where the search box leaves off. The search box is kind of like your best friend when you're finding emails um, and trying to look for something. But there are some things that are difficult to capture in a search, like if you are looking for emails from a particular person, you just search for that person's name. You don't need to create a label for that. But if you are, if you are getting trying to organize emails that are pertain to a particular like event that's coming up, it's going to be hard. You, you maybe can't just search for the name of the event. You might not get every email that pertains to it. So labels are there to help you categorize things that are hard to search for. So some label I've given you some label examples just to kind of get you get the gears turning in terms of like what kinds of categories we're talking about. So things that are like confirmation orders and receipts might have a label or for a particular event, um, you might label things as related to business or related to personal or related to like vacation or travel or something like that. Because it's gonna be hard to know exactly what keyword like you know what keyword is going to be in every one of your emails that has to do with, you know, business, like your business stuff. It's, it's going to be hard. So, um, and then we're also going to learn how to color code your labels too, um, which is really fun. So, let's check out this video. Another organizational feature that Google has is labels. Labels are over here on the side and are similar to folders in some ways, but in some ways very different, and I would argue that in order to, to create one, just click on create a label, and then enter a label. Click create, and there it shows up on the side. I can now apply this label to the email in my inbox by simply dragging and dropping the label onto the email. And you'll see the label applies to that email. You just drag and drop like that. Mm. So the reverse of how it looks. So, yeah, instead of dragging them over to the label, we're going to bring the label over to the email. Labels tend to be used for organizing things that are difficult to capture with a search string. Because you can't just put fundraiser events in the search box and expect to get everything that applies to fundraiser events. People word things differently and things like that. So labels are useful for things that are difficult to search for. It's really easy to just use the search box if you're looking for a certain person or a certain keyword. But it's these more complex categories uh, for which labels are really useful. I've got another label here called receipts. You can go ahead and drag that onto some of these emails to categorize those as receipts. One cool thing about labels is that you can apply multiple labels to the same email. So I can drop that tag on this email, and now this email has two different labels on it. With no problem with double categorizing emails in Google Mail. And if you want to give your labels just a little bit of visual pop, you can click on this little arrow that shows up next to them when you highlight over them, go to Label Color, and choose a color. And then that color will apply to those labels. And then you can do the same thing with your other labels. Give them a different color, and that will help to give some sort of visual categorization to your emails in addition to the text of the label itself. Okay. All right, so I love color coding stuff like that. So I really like the color coding <laughs> ability. Um, all right, filters is basically a way to make Google organize your email for you. And 
This is a, a little bit more of an advanced one than just like labels themselves, but it's once you get the hang of it, it's really powerful and saves you a lot of time. <clears throat> You can use Google filters to make Gmail organize your email for you. So let's click on this email. And let's say that this email is an example of an email for which I want to set up a smart rule. I just click on More, Filter Messages Like These, and it uses this email as an example to start creating a filter. I can create a filter that says, any email that I receive from this email address, do this with it. And here's all the things that you can do with it. Have it skip the inbox, mark it as red, you can star it, you can apply a particular label to it. This one's yeah. really useful. And choose apply the label to fundraiser events. And then I can click create filter. I can also apply it to any existing emails that currently match that criteria. So I click create filter. And your filter was created. You can also make these filters as precise or as simple as you want them to be. So I'll go to filter messages like these again. Maybe I want to say that the emails from Catherine L. Sweetman that have the words fundraiser in them, only those should have, should have the filter applied to them. So here I've got two criteria, and only the emails that match both criteria will have these things done to it. Create filter. Now, once you've done this, how do you get your filters to edit them? Click on the gear, click on settings, click on filters at the top, and you'll see all your filters listed. These two are kind of conflicting, so in this case, I would want to get rid of one of these. Let's say I want the second one because that one's a little bit more precise, so I'll delete this first one. And you can use this screen to create new filters or edit the existing ones. the way that we can block as well through filtering. I saw yeah, yeah, because one of the system. actions you can take is to have it skip the inbox, or you can have it just be deleted. You can have things go to spam or be never sent to spam. <laughs> okay, okay, someone gets falsely marked as spam a lot. Yeah, so. I can see sent to spam. Like, I want to know how to do that. But right. I, it's one of the options. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, and like, you know, are you know archiving something or having it skipped in the inbox mm -hmm. allows you to at least you never have to see it. You yeah. basically never see that email. Um, so once once you really get the hang of this, I, I mean I'm kind of a super user with this stuff, but I, I never I never apply labels to any emails anymore because my filters just do all of that for me. Mm -hmm. So it can really kind of supercharge your efficiency as you process through your email. <clears throat> Keyboard shortcuts. All right, these are really fun. Typing is faster than mousing. <laughs> it's, you know, if you're, if you're already writing a message, you already got your hands on the keyboard, it's much faster to just hit a key than to do this, you know, and then click. You'd be amazed, like, how much time that actually takes, like, that adds up. So, um, you actually have to turn this feature on, and here I'm just showing the path, how to get to it. You go to the gear and then settings, and then there's, like, a keyboard shortcuts on or off. You have to just flip that on. But once you've done that, you can use um, any of the keyboard shortcuts. I've got my favorites here. <laughs> There's a few that I use all the time, and the other ones, maybe a little bit obscure, you don't use that often. There's actually like, there's like 50 different keyboard shortcuts. But these are the ones you really use to compose, and reply, reply all. Um, so you can use this as you're cruising through your email. Uh, and then I have a link here um, that you can use once you are pulling up this PowerPoint. You can just click on that and it'll show you Google's entire list of keyboard shortcuts. Um, a few extra tips, tricks, and tools. These are things uh, we're not going to go into detail on, but I just want to have on the presentation so you can, um, once you're, 
you know, completely you know, up to speed with and excited about all the previous stuff, you kind of move on to these things. Um, there's a feature called undo send in <laughs> Gmail. And if you turn this on, and this, that link is to exact instructions on how to do it, what it'll do is it'll allow you um, to undo an ascending of an email. So if you click send on an email and you realize, oh shoot, you know, I forgot to say this. And you usually <coughs> realize that within the first 30 seconds. You can just click undo and it'll pull your email back. And it'll be as if you didn't send it at all. If you don't take advantage of that 30 second window or you move on to a, uh, another screen, you lose the ability to retrieve it. So it's just kind of like a little grace period. <laughs> what, what Google's actually doing there is they just, they kind of hold it in limbo for 30 seconds before it actually lets it go through its server. So that's what it's doing. It's, I use that all the time. <laughs> so yeah, saves me some embarrassing moments. Mm -hmm. um, Boomerang for Gmail is, does something kind of related. You can schedule your messages. So if you're typing a message and you're like, all right, I want to send this um, at a particular time, like maybe it's a reminder email and you're like, I want to remind people of this like at the end of the day, the day before, such and such. Well, you can use Boomerang to, it's, it's like an add-on package that you add on to Google Mail. You can use Boomerang to say, I want to deliver this email at exactly this time. And then you set it and then it's done. You don't have to be logged in. You don't have to have your computer turned on at all. Once you set it, you're done. Um, you can also, you, I use that feature all the time as well. You can even schedule recurring email messages with it. And you can schedule messages to be received back at a certain time. So that, um, so that um, there was a question earlier about what if you defer something to later, um, you know, what do you do with it in the meantime? Well, Boomerang does allow you to do something like, yeah, I sh this is something I want to do at the beginning of next week. And you can tell Boomerang, take this email away and put it back in my inbox a week from right now. Mm -hmm. So that it appears as if you're getting it at that time. <clears throat> um, and then there's some instructions on how to set Google as your default mail handler. So I don't know if anyone has this issue, but there are some programs where you'll like click on an email link and it'll try to launch maybe Microsoft Outlook, even though you don't use Microsoft Outlook, um, or Apple Mail if you're on a Mac. <coughs> and there's, there's a way uh, to set Google as your default mail. This has specific instructions depending on which browser you're using. Google Chrome and Firefox are going to be your best bets with that, because they're the most capable browsers out there. And that's it. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, so that's kind of my run, quick run through. I'm sure it's faster than how, you, how quickly you can take notes, but you can have access to this PowerPoint. Um, so try to leave a couple minutes here in case people have follow-up questions with any of that content. Maybe your mind is <laughs> just worrying. So. <clears throat> Well, first of all, round of applause for time. Yeah. 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 yeah.